All right. So, I just wanted to actually jump in real quick and show you that ForeFlight does work with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. So I don't know if you guys have actually gone and um, tried this yourselves, but it does work and it works pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a Cessna 172. Uh, let's start at Livermore. Here and we'll start from. I think it was 40. It was 50. 50 is the fuel box. 47, I think, was the one we wanted to start at. And we will go to Monterey. How's that sound? K M R Y. Monterey Regional. And we'll just do VFR direct which works. Let's do 7.30. Let's see, what time is it going to get dark? I guess that's fine. We can just do this. We'll change it on the fly if we need to. So yeah, ForeFlight works uh, pretty well with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Those of you who are legit pilots might be interested in knowing that. There's actually a little plugin that you have to download, and it's called flightevents.client. And more information is available on the ForeFlight website. But you can go ahead and take a look. You'll notice that I've got ForeFlight up here on my screen. Um, I've got it set up for Livermore right now, so you're actually seeing some live internet traffic on ForeFlight. And I've planned a direct flight down to Monterey and once the game loads I will connect it up and you'll see where I'm at all right ready to fly weather looks good right now we'll probably be landing right at sunset or right around dark cool so there's an application called flight events.client that you can run do I already have it open I do Start flight tracking, connected to flight events, which means that now my plane shows up on for flight. You can actually see it popping up right in the middle of the screen there at Livermore. So there's the plane. Now I'm going to orient to the plane. It's not going to actually pick up my orientation until we get started. Um, I've also changed some of the settings on uh, OBS, so let me know how the stream looks. It should be less laggy than it was last night but we'll go ahead and get our battery on. And we'll get our plane started. Good to go, avionics on. We get our taxi and nav lights going. We'll lean out for taxi. Hop off our brake and taxi to the runway. And the four flight does recognize that I have a plane connected, and we are taxiing to the runway. Livermore Ground Cessna 733 Bravo Echo taxiing runway 25 right via Julia Bravo. I believe with COVID hours, the um, tower actually closes earlier than normal. Usually it closes at, I think, 10. I think now it's closing at 7. <clears throat> so we've got a direct flight put into four flight from Livermore to Monterey. We'll see how it goes. Let me know if the uh, stream is choppy or laggy. Um, I believe I've set it up to be a little bit more performant. And we will see. Runway 25 right. 5,200 feet remaining. And we're just going to do a quick takeoff here. Now we probably could have taken off on 7. No, I guess the sock is pointing to my right. All right, mixture full, throttle full. Landing light on and strobes on. Airspeed is alive. 55, rotate. 
Do I have an echo? Let me turn that off. Thank you for that. All right, Echo should be gone. And then on a four flight, we can follow our projected path, which is pretty much direct south. Terrible climb here, but we'll get this going. <clears throat> I'm going to change my CDI here to GPS and use that to navigate. So we can see that Four Flight is working pretty well here with uh, Flight Sim 2020. Not something I expected. Uh, the day of or the day after release, but pretty cool. TFR ahead. And so, four flights letting me know about the uh, TFR, which is this temporary flight restriction over to the right. What is this? Firefighting. So there must be a fire over there, probably from the lightning that we had over the weekend. head over to our path and we'll notice that our navigation here is going to start kind of coming back into center if you look at the four flight view you can actually see that we're going to be intercepting that path if you look at the navigation in flight simulator uh, this is that magenta line that's on on the uh, map and then the position of where we need to be is further to the left. So once that lines up, we will be on our flight path and then we can turn back on course. Hey Garrett, I actually like it. <clears throat> what I recommend, um, I actually signed up for Microsoft Game Pass. It's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I picked this game up because uh, it's part of it. The standard edition is, is part of it. This is a great VFR simulator. So if you are currently a pilot and you like just kind of flying around by, you know, visual flight rules, being able to just kind of see where you're going, this is fantastic. It looks wonderful. Um, there are a couple of quirks, of course, but it works really, really well. If you want to do more advanced stuff like instrument training, not quite there yet. But... I mean, this is Livermore, Livermore, uh, California. My home airport's right there. And this is exactly what it looks like in this area. The, the scenery is stunning. Um, we're flying to Monterey right now. We're gonna go see what it, what it looks like there. Uh, but the entire Bay Area looks really, really well, really, really well done. Again, there's a couple of graphical, you know, inconsistencies, and I'm sure that they will fix those as time goes on. But honestly, it's, it's really, really good. And like I said, it's working here with, with Forflight. Yeah, Ben, it 100% is. There's one plugin that you need to grab. Um, let me actually grab the website for it. Uh, here, you know what I'll do? I'll actually, I'll paste the link to the Forflight uh, article on it, and then you can just go and grab the instructions from there. So let me do this and paste and there. Let me move the four flight window real quick. And I want to get this guy out of the way. Yeah, Garrett, I actually, um, I've got a full yoke uh, here. So I got the honeycomb. I, so do you have any flight sim stuff at all? Because there's a couple of different paths you can take. If you don't have any flight sim equipment, there is a joystick uh, uh, throttle combination that I recommend. The, the Thrustmaster T16000, I think is what they call it. And uh, it's a very, very well-built, accurate joystick. 
It's about 150 bucks um, for the whole setup, which is great. If you just want the joystick, it's got rudder twist and it's got a slider for the throttle. Uh, a little bit less precise, but just as good. It's about 100 bucks. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great uh, setup. That's what I use when I really quickly want to jump in uh, and do some testing and stuff like that. As far as like my full setup, I can probably grab my camera and show you. Um, I've got a Honeycomb Flight Alpha yoke, which is great. Uh, it's very, very uh, similar to flying in a real plane. I'll go ahead and change my mixture here and actually do some piloting. Um, works wonderfully. It's got full 90 degree, like you can, you can turn it the full distance that you would turn a real yoke. Uh, it's very responsive. A lot of the other yokes, like Logitech has one that kind of sucks where there's a dead zone right in the middle where you can't ever really center it without it kind of like rocking into a central position. So when you're coming into land, you're always going to hit that stupid detent and it just messes you up. And I, I, I could not wait to get rid of that yoke. I uh, got the Flight Alpha. It does not have a detent. Super smooth. Uh, so if you're going to do more general aviation like this, this is a fantastic yoke to get. Uh, and then I'm just using a, a Logitech or a Cytec uh, throttle thing over on the side. Um, if you want to do something more advanced, like I fly DCS World, I've got a, a full Warthog uh, HOTAS setup, which was expensive, but it's a fully metal, awesome joystick setup. And then uh, the rudder pedals that I'm using, uh, if you subscribe to me on YouTube, I've got a review on the uh, Thrustmaster TPR uh, pendular rudder, rudder set. It feels just like you're flying a real plane. Uh, it, it's Instead of the slidey kind of throttles that you get um, with most rudders, uh, it's, it's a full-on pendular rudder system, so it feels like you're actually operating a real set of rudder pedals. And yeah, ForeFlight is, is just as responsive as it would be in real life. You're going to see a little bit of a delay, I think, on the stream uh, when I interact with it. Not because ForeFlight is lagging, it's because I'm mirroring it via AirPlay. So you're getting about a, I don't know, second-ish lag. I'm going to level off here at about 4,500. Now what I'm going to do is actually kick on the autopilot if I can figure out how to do it. I'm not a G1000 guy. Autopilot. And we'll do heading. And we'll do altitude hold. And heading is not what I want. I wanted course. Here's my heading. Let me spin this around so that it's on what I'm currently at. Oh my god. Seriously? TFR ahead. Yeah, yeah, I know. There we go. I'll change the heading to be a little bit... A little bit to the right of where I want to be. And... Altimeter should be holding me at about 4,600, I would assume. Where is the autopilot? Yeah, 4,600. Cool. So we'll just continue on this heading until we get back on uh, course. You'll notice the four flight is following me along. We got our breadcrumb trail here, leaving from Livermore and getting on course. So this little bit right here, I tested it a little bit earlier, and I actually set myself to Concord, which is where I did my flight training, just to see if the four flight integration would work, and it did, and it was fantastic. So when I moved myself back to Livermore. It uh, apparently just slid me ac <laughs> across the screen, which is all good. All right, so let me change my mixture here. We'll get our fuel flow down. And I want to get my... RPM down to about 2450 will work. So let's take a look down over here. So that's following me down. We're just about to get back on our course. And again, flying down to Monterey. Let me switch to the external camera and show you guys some of the external views here at sunset in the Bay Area. 
Again, using ForeFlight. Hey, Ben, I'm just curious. Uh, were you able to take a look at that ForeFlight um, website? And is that helping you? So here is the Bay Area at sunset. We took off from Livermore, which is right over there. We're flying down to Monterey. I guess I can turn my landing and taxi lights off. Keep everything else on. Beautiful sunset here. Oakland International is right over there. Hayward is in that area, and San Francisco International is right around there. We're going to be flying up alongside San Jose, which is right there. We are going to be going underneath their Charlie shelf here. Actually, we'll be flying just into that shelf. So we're at 4,600, so that pink bit right in front of us is airspace for the approach at San Jose, we could probably descend down to, I guess we could, we're over that shelf. We don't have to worry about it. Never mind. We got two planes on approach, one Southwest Airlines, one is, I don't know who QXE is. We'll see if live traffic is working right now, but we should be able to see them kind of coming in here in a, in a bit on the approach side here to San Jose. Yesterday we were flying and the live traffic was about about five minutes behind on uh, what the sim was showing. So they might be coming in a little bit later than what ForeFlight is showing. But we'll take a look. We'll see. Let me jump back into the plane real quick and we'll get back on course. The uh, good thing about being in the real world when you're flying is you get to pay attention to your navigation aids <laughs> and not fly through your heading. Whereas when you're simulating and you're outside of the plane and not looking at your screen, you might not notice that. I'll just take us a second here to get back on course. And so we're flying down to Monterey. We'll go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more fuel, a little bit more mixture here. Should be good. Oil pressure looks good. Oil temperature looks good. I'm looking over here on the left hand or the right hand side. And let's see if we can pick up the Monterey Atis. No, Not the airport information. One one nine two five. Five. I'll go this way. I haven't set up any dead zones yet. No, I'm using the defaults. It's very, very touchy. Let's swap those over. See if we can pick up the Monterey Atis. Doesn't look like it yet. Yeah, right now if I if I pull back on the stick or the the yoke, the the whole plane will just like zoom up. It's uh, kind of interesting. I have to play around with that in a in a bit. All right, let's go back to external. See if we can see some of these live traffic's coming in. Updates for performance. I'm not sure what the question is. 
actually, before we do this, let's we're on we're on course. Let me set this up so that we're maintaining our course now. I mean, the game just came out today, so there haven't been any patches uh, in the past day. No, uh, I would expect maybe on a weekly basis we'll get some kind of patches. Not sure what they'll look like, to be honest with you. All right, now we can go back outside. So we got San Jose International. There comes in that plane. So yeah, it's about five minutes delayed. Let me go turn on the label and see if the... Oops, where do I want to go? Let me go here, general, uh, traffic, show nameplates on, apply and save, escape. Yep, southwest 1232. So it's about five minutes delayed on what's showing on the internet uh, traffic versus what the game is showing. Still, not too bad. I hope once Pilot Edge and uh, other other things like that Yeah, Brett, I've already got the Syria map preloaded. Uh, my dad was actually born in Syria, so I've never been, but I'm very much looking forward to flying around and seeing how accurate it is. I would love to have him kind of give me some insight on that as well. There's another one coming in. Now again, I'm also, <clears throat> if, my, if my stream is a little bit choppy right now, I am number one playing Flight Sim. I've got a DSLR connected to my computer and a capture card. Um, I've got four flights streaming over the network so that we can see four flight data. So there's a lot going on on my computer right now. But on the whole, the game is running really well, really well. Get over this mountain range and Monterey will be in the distance. The autopilot is holding altitude this time. Uh, when we were playing the Alpha, it was not. <laughs> it would slowly descend. Yeah, Brett, you know, I, I, I kind of agree with that. I think... I think once DCS switches to Vulcan and they get their performance increases uh, on that new rendering system, I agree with you. And I think that things like this will be possible. That being said, they're streaming, you know, 4.2 petabytes of world data uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I don't know that anybody has a computer that's got enough space to hold satellite imagery. And I don't think x is going to be able to do the streaming that, that they've set up with the uh, cloud system. I think Microsoft has the edge on um, terrain at the moment. I mean, people in DCS world right now uh, generally tend to complain about the file sizes as they are, and uh, I think that I think that uh, making them any bigger with higher resolution textures is not going to help. You know, I agree. I, I, I would have agreed with you in the alpha uh, and in the beta. The plane physics were terrible in Flight Simulator. Uh, they're better now. I don't know if we were just using an older older build or an older version of them, but uh, now they work pretty well. They're still not perfect. I would say that they're pretty close now to X-Plane, though. And yeah, the graphics are incredible. Let's see, Southwest 450. I wonder if that's who that guy is. We'll see in a second here.
You'll notice we're getting some turbulence here coming over the hills. This would be pretty accurate. Um, I've flown to Monterey before, and you definitely get bumps over these over these hills. So it seems like the weather modeling is working now better than it did. Let me go back inside. Let me adjust the heading just a bit to the right. And get back on course. And that guy would actually match up with uh, the Southwest flight that's on screen. So I'm wondering if he's... If that's Southwest 450, that means that the uh, live traffic is actually sinking well. So maybe there's like an initial lag period where it's grabbing data and then it sinks everything a little bit closer. I'm not sure. Not going to complain. That's actually pretty cool. And there's Monterey. We got some of our... Actually, that's probably Marina. Monterey is going to be over in this area. But yeah, we've got some marine layer coming in on the coast. Oh my goodness, look at that sun. That just looks spectacular. You know, I, Brett, I think that, that it's a great, it's a great metric to have. It's a great um, kind of goal. It would be awesome if everything ran at 4K 60. Um, I agree. I don't think it's the end all, be all, be all, end all. I don't think it's the be all, end all, of uh, of games. All right, getting a little dark in the cockpit. Let's turn on some lighting. Get our panel lights on. Pedestal light will turn on. So one of the bugs in the game right now is that the fuel quantity, uh, you can't ever fill the plane above 50%, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> so, kind of annoying there, but it's all good. Let's see, is there anything here? Cabin heat, don't need any of that. And do we have a thermometer? I'm not seeing outside air temp anywhere. it over here track estimated time on route north wind declutter map nope what do we got down here nearest alerts next rad there we go 27 yep it's it's pretty warm outside I don't think I need any uh, I need to worry about carb heat all right there's Monterey's approach lights Although I believe that they're blinking in the wrong direction. Yeah, Brett, and they're going to be um, upgrading this to be um, DirectX 12. Eventually, right now it's just running on DirectX 11. So it's not definitely not optimized. Get some of the clutter around or clutter gone. I just wanted to kind of highlight that ForeFlight does work, and it's actually pretty easy to set up. So I hope you found the um, hope you found the link to that. If you guys are using ForeFlight for your flight simming, I put it in the chat in uh, in here. But I'll just go ahead and switch to the sim only. And we'll just kind of take a look at everything and how it looks in game. Yeah, honestly, it runs really well. I'm, I'm not disappointed with the performance. All right.
right. Let's go back to exterior view for now. Sun just set over the horizon. We've got some awesome ground lighting. Got some marine layer. We're flying over Watsonville down here. There is an airport. Never landed at the airport. I have flown over it before. Yeah, I've got a I've got a 5120 by 1440 monitor. I'm I'm just running it at uh, 1920 or 2560. I think it's 2560 by 1440 uh, to maintain the aspect ratio for streaming. But when I run it at widescreen, it it runs fine. I've got a 9900K, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 2070. I'll probably end up upgrading to a, a 3000 series once those release in September. And I'm currently using the Honeycomb Flight Alpha yoke, and I'll probably end up getting the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant once that comes out. I know the pre-orders went live, or will be going live on September 1st. So I will uh, very likely be signing up for that. And those will go out in mid-October. The fog here and the marine layer looks really good. I'm going to be interested to see if that actually is blinking in the wrong direction or if it's just a just a, 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 a being too far away. It looks weird. I'm not sure. Yeah, Brett, they actually released uh, track IR support right before they went out of uh, beta, which was a huge surprise to all of us, and we were super happy. Agreed, Eugene. That would be kind of cool. I believe that is on their uh, list, but I'm not sure where. All right, let's see if we're getting the ATIS information yet. Pop inside. Uh, 11925 is what I've got set. I think I've got the comm level up. Not getting any nav. Not getting any communications. I might end up getting the premium edition because I live in California. I live actually in the Bay Area, so for me, this is like where I would fly. So San Francisco would be good for me. Um, Coronado just put out the, well, I guess yesterday, put out the um, the um, 182, which is a plane that I can fly in real life, and so I might grab that. I don't think that you can export MFDs to a second screen yet. I'm not sure if that's something that they will allow. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh, is that the... That's the wrong side of the runway. That is actually the correct direction. I thought Monterey was a little bit further to the right, and it's not. That's the approach end that I'm going to be landing on. Why am I not getting ATIS information? That is annoying. Monterey Tower, 118.4. Let's see if I can get that. Go down to four. Say, hey, Monterey, your ATIS is out. One eight four. Uh, 
ATC's broken. Okay, cool. I'm actually just not hearing any of this. Which is interesting. Right traffic, runway 28 left. Altimeter is 2994. Niner, Niner Four. All right, let's turn off our autopilot. Uh, well, Brett, I've had four flight up. That's that's what I've been using. I don't know if there's another third party nav map that you're referring to. Camera, let's see. What am I looking for? Nope, not camera. I want ATC again. 28 left. Yeah man, I've been I've been streaming with Four Flight up the majority of the flight. You can see Four Flight right next to the chat. It's working great. I posted a link to how to make it how to set it up. It's super easy. Let's go full mixture, and we will reduce our RPM to about 2,000. Yeah, you know, that's got to be a bug. The mixture almost, like, resets itself when you start descending. There's a link to the four flight uh, four flight setup article. Requires one supplemental app that you just run in the background, but it, it's working great. I mean, you can see it on the screen here. Four flight is showing everything that we're doing. So we'll descend down to 1,000 feet, I believe. Nope, we'll descend down to 1,700. So TFRs are temporary flight restrictions. You can actually see here on four flight the outline for it up here, and it's for firefighting. So these must be from the crazy thunderstorms that we had over the weekend on Saturday, I believe it was. I don't remember which day. Let's see. They wanted us on a right base for two, eight left. Altitude here, 3,300, down to 1,750. We're going to call it 1,800. Got Monterey Airport in sight. We just saw a beautiful sunset. Go ahead and get our landing and taxi lights on. All the other lights are on as required.
And so now what I'm doing is I'm actually using my uh, HSI down here. I know that uh, runway 28 is going to be at 280 degrees, which is this line right here. So what I'm going to do is actually change my heading bug to 280. And they want me on a right base for 28 left. There's 27. There's 28. And now I know that when this is off of my nine, uh, 3 o'clock, I'll be flying on my right base. There's the runway threshold. So this looks like a right base for 28 left. And it looks like I'm going to want to be basically flying towards that. So. That is what I will kind of aim for, that little indentation there in the in the hill. Reduce our throttle a little bit here and begin our descent into Monterey. So on approach, when you're coming into land, you control your altitude by changing your throttle. And less throttle means less lift, so the plane will start to descend, but it'll maintain speed, is kind of what the plane is, is going to want to do. If you want to change your speed, that's when you start playing with your pitch. If you raise the nose, it'll actually slow the plane down. It'll also slow the descent rate down, but then the plane will slow down and then start descending again, then slow down and start descending again. So it's kind of a, kind of a dance, and you really kind of get a feel for it the more you fly. I've got mixture full rich. I'm descending down to about 1,800 feet. We are approaching our right base. I'm going to go ahead and put down one notch of flaps. Let's see, which button is that? That one, perfect. we got one notch of flaps set. Approach end of the runway. Drop the flaps way too fast. That's my bad but simulated plane, YOLO. All right, let's go ahead and reduce our, our throttle a little bit. We'll slow ourselves down. So what I'm doing is kind of raising the nose and pulling back the throttle to try and maintain a descent rate. And slow myself down at the same time. So here we are, 280 is off the 3 o'clock position on my HSI. We got the two runways, 28 left is this one, 28 right is the smaller runway. Go ahead and pull our throttle back to about 1700 RPM, that should slow us down quite a bit. Let me switch for flight to actually track. Yes, go away. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just do simulator only and show you guys the landing approach without me in the way. Take a look. Monterey, we're coming in a little high here. So we can actually probably go idle at this point. We'll start our turn in, you'll notice this airspeed on the left hand side is starting to come down. We'll pull up on our nose and what we're going to do is we're going to slip this in. So a slip is essentially putting in full rudder one way and putting in aileron to counter it in the other direction. And what it does is it really really quickly reduces your airspeed. Uh, I'm sorry, it reduces your altitude. Final runway two eight left. Five hundred. Okay, here we go. Get full flaps in. Come in a little bit diagonal. I'm noticing that the Pappy lights, the precision approach lights, are not actually showing up. So I'm not sure that must be a bug. But here we come. Got plenty of energy here, 65 over the threshold. Now what we'll do is we'll start leveling off and that'll slow us down even more. And 
just hold off the runway. There we go. Flaps up. We'll pull back on the yoke to slow the plane down just by using aerodynamic braking. And this is kind of uh, a little bit touchy too because in a real Cessna, you can pull back pretty hard without the, the nose pointing up like that once you've landed. Eugene, it uh, kind of depends on the student. Depends on how how good you are at learning. If you're if you're pretty good in a sim, I, I actually started in simulators a um, long time ago, and um, did really well when I went to actually do flight training. Uh, it helped me a lot. Um, some instructors don't particularly like it when students have simulator experience because you can form some pretty bad habits in the simulator um, yet it was actually pretty good for me it, it helped a lot uh, it can be anywhere from about five thousand dollars depending on your location to be able to get your your check ride um, all the way up to fifteen thousand dollars and again that really just depends on how good you are when you are uh, learning how to fly. If you, if you pick it up really quick, you're not gonna need as much time practicing and it'll, it'll cost less. They don't charge you up front, uh, you pay per lesson. So each lesson is usually a couple hundred bucks and you can do it weekly or monthly or you know whatever, whatever schedule fits your, um, your budget. And let me go ahead and switch back to here. Now, you might notice that <laughs> the, the, the runway or the taxiway here is not very smooth. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the time so that we can actually take a look at what this looks like in the daylight. And the taxiway does not look like this in real life. Uh, yeah, this is definitely interesting. Interesting looking with lights out in the middle and bumps all over the place. So the Autogen didn't quite get Monterey right. Looks all right, but it's definitely not this bumpy. <laughs> it's okay, I think the runway was okay. And then the uh, FBO that I stopped at when we flew to Monterey was actually that one, I think. Autogen building uh, in real in real life it looks a little bit nicer than that. Let's actually check the runway and see if the runway looks good. Here's ten right, uh, nothing on final. Changing runway one zero right. Thank Enter you. Runway one zero right. Seven thousand one hundred feet remaining. I think the runways are, are generated properly though. Shouldn't be any bumps on this bad boy. Just gonna do a high speed taxi down the runway. Now, a few things about this game. There's not really a lot of left turning tendency. In the real world, when you you know throttle up in a Cessna, the plane wants to turn to the left, and I'm actually using left rudder here to turn the plane to stay on center line. So that's opposite of how it works in the real world. And yeah, it looks like they got the runway right, but the taxiway. Look at that taxiway, just wavy. That is not what Monterey's taxiways look like. Runway looks good, though. It's got the same kind of upslope and all of that. All right, guys. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, that ForeFlight does work in Flight Simulator 2020. Um, I actually went and looked that up this morning uh, just because I was curious. A friend of mine mentioned that they were working on getting it to work, and I just wanted to see if they had figured it out or what the status was. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that... Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it actually is working. 
and uh, there's a way to connect it. So I've posted the link to that in the chat. Uh, it's actually in the video right here at the end. It's the second message up on the screen. Uh, it's just a, a help article on ForeFlight. There's one application you need to download. Um, it's called Flight Events, and um, that connects just like X-Plane with ForeFlight. So if you want to use ForeFlight to kind of interface with Microsoft Flight Sim and and play around with that and see where you are on your maps and do some VFR flight planning, uh, it works really well. Now, Flight Sim 2020 is not in a state to practice IFR. I'm definitely still going to be using X-Plane for that. Um, flight Sim is, I, it, yeah, it's not it's not ready for that yet. Uh, it looks great when you're flying through clouds. Uh, you you just can't navigate. It's not 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 feasible. Um, but for VFR flight, practicing night flight, stuff like that, this is actually really fun. So anyway, hope it was a good stream. Uh, everybody enjoy. Uh, good luck getting four flight working on your simulator. And I will uh, be actually putting together some more videos this week, comparing flight simulator to real world flights that I've done and basically doing the same procedure and then kind of transitioning between uh, real world camera and uh, flight simulator view. So, all right, everybody, have a great night. Um, I'm just going to park here in the taxiway. And we will get the plane secured. Get landing lights off, nav strobe lights off, we'll turn avionics off. Go ahead and pull the mixture back. And battery off, key off. See you in the next one, everybody. Bye.